So today I'll talk about uh, not like IT security, but the thing which is quite nearby. And I think many of you witnesses have heard about or read reports about uh, breaches and targeted attacks. And you know that social engineering tricks are often used like to trick one or several person persons to force an open link or email or something. So that's how like uh, brains manipulated by attacker. But our talk is not about this, but uh, about how to do it uh, at a huge scale. So we are all like me, Lion, and Fyodor, and Fyodor not here, like uh, from Trendmicro FTR team, and FTR states for future threat research. And the objective of the team is uh, uh, track the trends on the underground and uh, like uh, tra trends and changes uh, on the security landscape to predict what happened in the near future uh, with like all the industry, with market and like uh, with new types of attacks and so on. So we didn't use a buzzword now, which is a fake news. It's a buzzword of the year now. Because when we dig it deeper into this topic, we figure it out that it's easy, not easy to spot uh, like a, a, a fake news, and the fake news is just the top of the iceberg uh, with public opinion manipulation technologies. So we focus it uh, not on the creating like a fake news or like clickbait topics, but about tracking anomalies in distribution, like uh, um, different. Uh, and uh, use uh, different topics which affect public opinion manipulation in particular countries, uh, in particular region, and so on. Uh, so, like, if you look uh, into historical insight, like, uh, you can see the different technologies uh, for information distribution, like a print first printing machine from 15th century, like a radio, like and like uh, the incident with radio in 1938, when uh, uh, people uh, understand the rate, the strange radio aliens, uh, the Earth. Uh, here is a picture of Stalin with a good guy, which is supposed to be good, and like when 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 the guy guy died in Siberia, there is no more guy. And here are some recent tweets about uh, Donald Trump. Uh, who almost uh, killed the fish in Japanese pound. So what, what, what happened now, we, would say, we, can, we can call it like fragmentary thinking or like hashtag thinking. So nobody have a time to read all the news to do background checks. And almost everyone believes uh, like um, what, what we watch uh, on the news. So like here is uh, one of the journalists, uh, she posted about uh, like uh, how Trump almost killed the fish, and here is uh, your recent, your recent, uh, recent talk about our sensitive topic. So what, what actually probably she did here. So like, uh, if we dig into the theory behind like what is working, we will uh, brief you uh, among like several case studies and uh, theories from like uh, 70s, which was decade, built decades ago just to be familiar with what happened on the theoretical background, and we will brief you what happened on the underground services, so what is it's possible to buy on the underground uh, to reach the goal with uh, mass public opinion manipulation. So this is an experiment uh, in USSR in the 17th. Uh, so when uh, a group of students uh, like, uh, watched this picture, and uh, we have two subgroups. So for one of the subgroups, they say it's a scientist. A scientist. How you can describe it? And you can see like a lot of positive uh, description among this picture. And for the second group, uh, there was an intro which is like it's a criminal. How you can get, describe this picture? And like you, you can see like uh, er, er, everything is negative about this. And, they can, and actually it was like a, a, an actor in the theater. So, and like what happened now, it's almost the same. Like, like if you watch some TV channels, uh, we, we're climbing about our TV channels, like uh, about bananas on the screen. And uh, it's really interesting if you look about, uh, like, like search like fake news compilation, compilation or something, CNN will appear, so like it's about 10 of top 20 
uh, like search engine results. So, and the result of this theoretical research is like a human brain like accept the hints uh, what we, we what it has uh, if if we, it uh, have to make decision in the lack of information. And uh, this thing is exploited more and more. So there is another interesting theory like uh, from a Russian group of scientists who call them uh, themselves like uh, internal predictor of USSR. So what we did, we analyzed why USSR has been collapsed and we built like a several theories like how to rule the world. So the easiest way to be uh, familiar with this theory, you can Google on YouTube lectures at FSB, how to rule the world and found the lecture with uh, subtitles, but this is just a one idea, one of the ideas from these guys. It's called time law, and the idea is like uh, every generation it's uh, about 25 years, and if we watch into the history about how technologies changes, so like uh, between the paper and the printing process, there was about 75 generations, Later on, like uh, between printing process and typewriter was uh, 16. And now we have technologies, like, like many technologies during one generation. So what, what does it mean if you uh, read it backward? It means that you, as here, you can't use experience from your parents, grandparents, from big libraries to make decision on current technologies. Uh, because uh, your knowledge on the modern technologies is better than uh, knowledge uh, of, you, uh, of your parents and grandparents. And that's why you have to make uh, your decisions on your own, and it, it's open a big way to manipulate uh, public opinion. And like what happened before, like uh, everybody read a newspaper, papers and like uh, with facts and something, and what we're having now like in a uh, uh, news in 90 seconds in, in one minute or even like in 30 seconds, uh, I think on Euro news. So like nobody can do double check and everybody have to believe uh, what happened uh, 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 just by watching TV. So like in the same situation with many like uh, uh, many things with conflicting interests, like in Syria, like if you watch uh, television like in Russia and in the United States, you will watch the same video stream, uh, but the description will, will be like totally different. So like even if you Google something like Russia involved in attack and Russia not involved in at an attack and so on. So one country accused another and another country accused the first one. And there was another uh, like a part of the experiment I mentioned before. It was experiment with two pyramids and two groups uh, of students. So the, for the first group, uh, students, Seven students was able to make independent decision about color of the pyramids. And for the second group, six students uh, climb it where both pyramids are white, as, here, as you can see here. And uh, uh, like a uh, professor watch it on the decision of the last student. And in many cases, last student uh, said like both are white. And when uh, the student has been asked, why, why do you think, Did it, didn't you spot where the color is different? Say so, like, I, I think it's both white. I'm pretty sure about that. And it was like an hour like uh, uh, thing with describe uh, how our brain uh, like accept the news and accept like huge the volume of information. So if you see like many, many times the same thing uh, like on the, this angel, engine, so like um, more likely you will accept, uh, accept this thing. So like if we talk about uh, fake news, which is clickbait, like for metric crowds who do like a fact checks, a fake news doesn't work. So for example, for people who was born in the, in the USSR and live in, in the Russia like in early 90s, uh, like in USSR we had like, just two TV channels and after that there were like uh, many, many TV channels with like a lot of fancy advertisement and people blindly believe it. But when people learn and do background checks, so what is another approach? Uh, it's about biasing like positive and negative uh, comments or like titles or like captions in the news. And uh, where is the research? Uh, the link is here about UK elections in 2015. And you can see like uh, how one of the uh, famous TV channel highlighted like uh, Cameron and Corbyn candidate. So the blue one is like neutral or positive uh, comments and the orange one is uh, negative comments. So that's another approach uh, for opinion manipulation. 
So like what, what, what happened in the theory, like, uh, but what happened on, on the uh, underground market? What I would like to say that uh, it's not often pure underground market uh, because the similar technologies use it uh, just uh, uh, to promote products like in marketing. But uh, you can make your decision like uh, on, on, on the screenshots you will see. Oh, thank you. So we will introduce, we will introduce some theories uh, about uh, how to manipulate people's uh, belief or decisions. Now we will look at some theories, uh, how the theories are applied to some underground services uh, and then affect our daily life. Um, it is a well-established fact that we rely on the social networks to, every day. Um, we, can, we, we collect friends there, we read news there, and we even collect information we even collect information from the social networks to make various decisions. Like we track customers' reviews before we want to buy something. We also want to uh, want some investor advice from the social network and to decide to, for one investment. And sometimes our votes are also, uh, are also influenced by the people who post their opinion on the social networks. We have to say that we spend too much time, we, we, we take too much information from the social networks, but it is a good opportunity for, for someone to, to run some social network manipulation services. Let's see some services. Okay, thank you. Let's see some services in the deep web markets, uh, like this one. This is uh, Twitter follower services in Alpha Bay market. Sorry. The Alpha Bay market. And, and usually the follower are bots, not real people. The bots can follow a given Twitter account automatically. The bots also can retweet a given post automatically. Suppose you read a, a post from a Twitter account, which has 100,000 100, followers. Do you believe the, the post? Um, as Vladimir said, um, we, we cannot verify the post, so we tend to believe it because we think many followers have trusted this account. So the post should be true. So such follower services just exploit our weakness in the thinking. And the other social networks uh, platforms are also hit by the such manipulation services. You can see that there's a, uh, there's an Instagram follower services. There's a Reddit upvotes. There's a YouTube video views. So, so you can see that many platforms are hit by the social network of ma manipulation services. Just a quick introduction to the Alpha Bay market. Alpha Bay market is a deep web, it's a well known deep web market. Uh, criminals sell guns, weapons, counterfeit goods, uh, even malwares in there. Unfortunately, the Alpha Bay market is uh, taken down by the law enforcement this year. Accessing deep web markets requires some technical skills. It may be difficult for some people, but my, my manipulation services are becoming much easier to access. You can just key in some keywords in the Google so you can find a lot of service providers no matter what language you use. Here we show some, uh, some results. This is a uh, English search result. This is a uh, German result. French. French, okay, sorry. <laughs> it's French results, okay. Uh, this is Russian, right, okay. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Spanish result. This is German, right, okay. Yes. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, we we even found some Arabic results, also the Chinese results. So actually, like uh, you're not uh, supposed to dig deeper into like onion sites like Deep Web uh, to find the services. So if you know appropriate docs, it's easy to find like for everyone. Okay. And if we click some re search results, we will have the details of the manipulation services. Here we show some uh, follower service. You can see there's uh, some uh, follower services in German and English. Uh, no. So, uh, yes, yeah, so it's yes. The German uh, followers, like uh, uh, international for followers sell, sell it in, German, in Germany, and uh, French followers. And as you can see, like, uh, the same amount of followers in Germany cost, like, 500 followers cost, like, 15 euros, and in France it's, like, 4.5. So it's uh, more than three times cheaper. So the major difference is about uh, not the services, but the prices in different market. And like uh, some people can save like uh, 10 tens more money on the same services by choosing appropriate card country for appropriate service. Oh yes, and uh, we also found some Arabic follower service. You can see there is very obvious. We also found some follower service in other social network platforms. This shows the uh, follower services in WeChat and Weibo. Uh, they are social network services in China. We can see that the social network manipulations, oh, sorry, the manipulation service is a global problem. Uh, no matter services people use or the countries people live in. So uh, I will let Vladimir to introduce some introduce interesting findings from the Russian underground. Yeah, so, so if we talk about like obvious services like likes, uh, followers, it's one side of the coin, but we found several offers which were very, very interesting. So for example, this advertisement says that we're able to put uh, any video in the top five trending video videos on the YouTube in particular country for about 7,000 euros. So, like, uh, if somebody ordered the service and paid 7,000 7, euros in Russia, uh, his video will be watched by, by everyone who opened, like, uh, their page on the YouTube. So, like, uh, it's, it's, it's like a, a all-in-one offer. It's a combination of more, like, uh, uh, all of the services that we mentioned before, but uh, offers guarantee result and, uh, like, a customer doesn't force it to pay if the result uh, hasn't reached it. So, and like, if we talk about uh, this kind of activities, like a trending window, uh, trend, trending videos or something, uh, in social networks, there is another theory which called uh, bandwagon effect. And generally it says that uh, the more and more people believe something, uh, like for our people, they are jumping in the same bandwagon or they believe the same topic despite uh, the evidence of fact we have. So if, if somebody uh, wants to uh, hug the brains and uh, he reach or she reach a critical mass, it's not, not easy to stop it. Uh, uh, another news, another recent news uh, from the end of November, like uh, several uh, Big companies uh, stop, uh, like stop it to collaborate uh, or like uh, decrease it collaboration with, with YouTube due to the unappropriate un un comments uh, near the videos. And here we can see a service offer uh, like uh, for, the, for the comments. So you, you can order a comment uh, like positive comments, negative comments, like mixed comments, like some amount of positive, some, for example, 80% of positive and 10% of neutral and negative. Or you can even like provide a template or like list of the keywords which uh, like uh, the service owner should use to make the comments. And the price is like about $2 uh, for 10 comments. So it's like uh, 20 cents per comment, uh, uh, five cents per comment uh, for, or tw 20 cents per comment, like uh, of your choice. So, and uh, many of you think like, uh, like where is the humans and the bots, but, and like bots doing wrong things and humans doing like good things. 
Uh, but we're interesting situation like when it's really hard to say like is it bot or, or, or human and we found for example uh, phenomena which called like uh, accounts with history so you can see like uh, uh, Facebook accounts from 2010 for 2009 2008 and it's like automatically registration we claim anti-banning property of the account and this is like amount of available account and price per account. It's about uh, three, four dollars per, per this kind of special account with history. And the same is uh, with Twitter. So you can see like accounts which are like five or even seven years old. Uh, like the profile is, profile is filled and like uh, account confirmed by email and so on. So for this kind of accounts, like usually it's the same situation with uh, recently registered domains. So you remember like three or five years ago, like botnets uh, use it just registered domains for malware distribution. And uh, we had a lot of recommendations like to block uh, just registered domains. And the same impression uh, like and the same actions was with bots. But somebody think it in advance. So somebody like uh, prepare this kind of bots, like all this kind of accounts, uh, like uh, for the future sailing. And uh, now it like the technique to block like only recent doesn't work. And it's really hard for social networks for Twitter uh, to do anything. And if you look at, into the advertisement on the underground markets, we say like, we split promotion with bots and real humans, and we even highlight which kind of problems you will have if you use just the bots. So like bots dying, like uh, bots block it and so on. So like uh, it is easy to buy uh, live human promotion. And if we look into the process behind this, so it wasn't underground process. So it was like a crowd crowdfunding uh, intention to promote uh, like small internet shops, like, like, like somebody has an internet shop, internet shop and he wants to get like maybe like 100 positive comments, but he can't re register like 100 accounts and do it. And, we, and the person offer, I can comment on your shop and you will comment on mine. So how, and this means it's a real human comments and this is like a real human promotion. But later on, it evaluate to the things when like um, uh, this kind of deals uh, uh, was uh, changed with coins. So, so you promote with coins, you have a coin, and you can use it not immediately, but by later. And later on, like on this kind of uh, underground stock, uh, stock markets, you can just buy a coin and promote anything you want without uh, doing the comments. But what's the way how real human comments uh, appear? So like, like promotion is a one topic, but what about like elections, polls, uh, like in the internet? So this is a funny advertisement in Moscow. Uh, like uh, people from apartment building uh, are really scared what, uh, what the government supposed to build yet another building and uh, uh, disrupt the forest near the building. And we put in this like paper advertisement with this short URL to type if you need to vote. And this reminds me like a 414 HTTP error. It's like the, the request URI is too long, but really some people doing it because like we don't, didn't know about like URLs shorteners. So this was a funny story, but not funny story. It's about uh, the change.org. So how many of you knows what is change.org? Okay, so it's a site for petitions and uh, uh, the idea is like for Many government uh, and regional governments consider the petitions on the change.org if petition has enough votes. And what we see here, it's an order for two petitions for 25,000 uh, votes on the change.org for about uh, two and a half thousand dollars. And the 10,000 of votes for an hour petition uh, on change.org for the Russian government for the price about one thousand dollars. And here's advertisement like, uh, like, we can just make votes on any on any competitions on any uh, voting online. And what we people uh, this these people say, it doesn't matter if you have to confirm your vote by email. It doesn't matter if you need to use like social network account authorization to put your vote. Like one vote per IP, it doesn't matter. And even 
if uh, voting system have a confirmation by SMS, it doesn't matter, it just double the price. So like, for example, for confirmation with SMS, one vote costs about 10 cents. And like uh, for our uh, our types of uh, protection, it's usually cost like three or five cents per vote. So it's really cheap and like affordable, not only for governments, but for any party who wish, which wish to manipulate. But here we can see like a service maybe like for celebrities and like famous people. So it's opposite service to remove information from the internet. So the service uh, claims we can remove information about you in the internet if there is something bad. And for this site we, we have like a Russian and English version. And for, uh, and the only difference between like Russian and English version, if you can't read Russian, you'll pay starting from 50 bucks. And if you can't uh, uh, use Google Translate, you will force it to pay starting from 100. So price is double like, uh, like because you don't learn Russian yet. <laughs> yeah, so, so another thing that rarely mentioned in Russia, it's called Publix. And you can find this kind of offers, I think, everywhere. So the idea is employment of a public social networks group to promote your topic. So here you can see advertisement uh, how to buy uh, group members, but it's easy. Uh, here is it like a stock market uh, for groups in different social networks. So you can buy like a, a group, a group uh, with, 100, uh, with 150,000 subscribers uh, for about uh, 600 bucks and promote any topic inside this group. You can able to choose between like uh, pretty girls or like political topics. Uh, you can choose, uh, you can target very, very precisely. So for example, you can buy a group in particular city with males or females uh, with particular age. So for example, something in Paris uh, with age starting from 80 till 25, if you want to do something with student in Paris. And you know what could happen in Paris uh, with student. Uh, with student like uh, in, at least in recent, recent years. So uh, we, Almost done with uh, underground services, but uh, it's a background site. So, uh, so, and we will look uh, into the several case studies. So, we witnessed the uh, news about uh, 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 like uh, Facebook did take down in 2013 in in the country wide scale, wide scale in Russia. And we never know what's the reason. Then you say like uh, Facebook advertised drugs in the social network. And drugs is not allowed to advertise in Russia, unfortunately. So if, if somebody do it, uh, the site uh, is blocked on the court order. I think it's a, like a process which happened in many countries. So like for child porn, for drugs, for terrorism, and so on. So, but what happened like recently, we, we spotted an article on, on the one on the underground telegram forums. And uh, the start of the article was like a step-by-step -step guide. It's usually thin, like step-by-step -step guide could be like uh, white, like for everyone, gray, like for people who are like uh, not really afraid and black. So for people who do good upset and so on. So, and the scheme, uh, the scheme claims that uh, um, like, you can earn by, by dropping the stocks of particular company. And there was just several obvious con calculations. But on the next page, it was really interesting thing. So, uh, so we claim it like, uh, it, we tested it on the Facebook in 2013. And here is like a step by step guide. So we cre created a site. It's like misprints with, because it's like Google translated. So it's like, uh, with, with drugs advertisement. And we hack it into the advertisement agency, uh, which has a contract with Facebook. And since the agency has been trusted, uh, Facebook didn't do did, the uh, background checks for the advertisement. So we were able to push uh, drugs advertisement on the Facebook. We took a screenshot and in parallel with, we feel it clients through the Russian authority. What happened on the Facebook? We advertise drugs. And in the same time, we push it, uh, some hints to the journalists. And, uh, like, uh, and, uh, this affected, uh, like a Facebook stock somehow. As, at least as I see at this period of time, we see a quite high volatility of the stocks, uh, of the stock's price, uh, between like opening and closing. 
And we see a quite high volatility, like for example here uh, and here, in the terms of volume. So there is some correlation with this case. So it called like pump and dump, I think, in US technology, but uh, this is the case like when people climb, we did it with Facebook in 2013. Uh, so line will continue like uh, uh, we have, okay. Oh, next, uh, we are talking about the analysis on the social network data set. Um, Trent Michael has a collaboration with uh, Twitter for security research. As a researchers, we can access the Twitter's uh, for daily for dump. So because the daily dump is too big, basically we just slice the Twitter dumps by the keywords and hours. Then we focus on the slice the Twitter data to detect the Twitter bots. Um, we have some general rules to detect the, detect the bots and a group of bots. And the Twitter bots in one community should share some uh, common patterns. These patterns can be summarized from the account profiles and the behaviors. For example, some bots could have the similar avatars. You can see the example here is that you can, these two bot accounts have the same avatars. And uh, and uh, in one bot community, the every bot could have a, could just follow the each other, and uh, so they have almost the same followers. Account behavior is also very helpful to detect the bots. We have some measurements for the account behaviors. For example, if an account is a posting too much in a certain, in a very short time, it is very likely that th that account is a bot because normal user cannot do that fast. Um, we also check active hours, active hours of an account. If the account is still posting in the late night, it is a very, very abnormal. We also check other, other other parameters like the numbers of posts per day and the simultaneous activity on the posting topics, the timing evaluation, the triggering points, and, the, and we're also spotting the leading bots and the isolated communities. Graph is very useful for analysis, especially for identifying the isolated communities. Uh, an isolated community is a group of bots. They never talk to each other. They, they never talk to other communities. The red graph is uh, an example of uh, the isolated, isolated uh, community. You can see here. This, this, uh, this uh, account is the, the bot master and the other, other account are bots. You can see the, the, there's no other connection to other communities, and uh, the name of the bots are like generated by the machine. Uh, let's take a, a Macron leaks as a case study. Uh, after Macron leaks hashtag appeared in the Twitter, we took the first 24 hours data to, to study. The timing of the publication was really interesting because it happens right before the election. And the official media in France haven't had a chance to comment, while the alternative media were able to, to do that. So we draw this uh, network graph to search the Twitter bots. The first impression is that there are, there are two big communities over there, and uh, we use we use different color to mark the to mark the, the language the Twitter account use. The, there are two major colors means that there are two major language in the in the communities. The purpose are the the, pur the purple is the English and uh, the green is the French. So we can see that there are two major um, languages and uh, then we sample the, the sample the, the, the tweets in, in those uh, communities to verify the, are they the boss or not. 
But after investigation, we found that there are normal, there are normal discussion in the mainstream. So if we look at the graph in different angles, so we will have a, we will find some isolated, isolated communities. And uh, they are the communities that we are looking for. They are very strange. They never talk to the mainstream communities. So we look into the those uh, communities. This is one community, uh, isolated community. We check the we check the the this the the master the master account, and we found this this guy. Uh, this guy is a bot master. He has uh, many followers. You can see that. And uh, and he posted anything, but uh, his followers. This is his followers, and his followers. The name is very strange, and uh, they just they, ju they just retweet any any post, the, the bot master post. So, in the Macron League case, this guy makes some comments on it, and uh, and then his bots retweet those comments. And this community is uh, very unique. We just mentioned that the, in the Macron League case, most of the users use, uh, speak, uh, speak English or the French, but this community speak Turkish. And the many followers, and those followers are both. So we checked the tweets and found that those tweets uh, Combines the Turkish news and with the Macron League hashtag, and so they 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 try to try to ride a wave, and some it 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 means that some people want to explore it, the hot topics as possible as they can, no matter where the topics happen. So the, and we can call this thing uh, hashtag riding. So people ride the hashtag despite the topic we have because the topic is trending. And they promote their own agenda on any trending topic. And uh, we have some learning from this case that uh, the hashtag, uh, some hashtag just happened 20 hours, this hashtag just happened uh, 24 hours before the election. And uh, the domestic media is not allowed to comment on this, this incident. But the social media is on control. So everybody can post their opinion in the social media. And it, this is a good opportunity for the board master to run some campaigns. And some campaigns are the board manip manipulated. So we have other, we have other fundings. That is, uh, Does anybody know what is coffee fair? You know, you never see it? Okay, so, so like for the coffee fair and real, do so, so for the case of Macron leaks, uh, you saw like four uh, data injection point, like four clusters from which like information promoted. And here like a uh, legal account post and what happened next? So what happened if you're like researcher and you have a lot of human followers? We're watching uh, your tweets and we following it uh, like and your followers do this, doing the same. So like it's like spread like like actually like uh, a nuclear bomb. So it's like a waves, uh, and it's spread like quite quite far away. So this is like a normal behavior. It's except like uh, this kind of dots. And what happened uh, with Trump uh, coffee? Like we have a normal cluster, or almost normal cluster, and we have something strange here. And that means like that somebody like retweeted, and nothing happened later. And if you, and we look it deeper into this part of cluster, and we found very interesting things. A lot of bots following exact Trump accounts, and some of bots uh, use uh, uh, at least like bots, bots world in the user agent stream. And more funny, like many bots use a uh, URL to their source code on the GitHub or other, uh, other places like, uh, in the, in the user agent stream. And we found a bot which, which do spell check on Twitter, on tweets. So anytime uh, when Trump making mistakes, bot retweets. We found that some bots have even like credentials inside the source code and some bots following uh, like our topics. 
So and all these bots are dedicated to the Donald Trump. So and I, I, I actually think it's like for fun, but like uh, the, the scale is really, really huge. Uh, so and uh, let's look at the several uh, bot cases. So like here's like a, just a usual bot which promote like some hashtags and nothing more. So it's easy to spot uh, this thing. So maybe like um, too much tweets like for a year, too much likes, but it doesn't matter. But this is another case, like uh, three bots with almost the same like uh, amount of tweets uh, with uh, almost the same uh, amount of followers uh, posting uh, different images, but with the same agenda. So for Twitter, it's really, really hard job. So if you know like 100,000 account reposted uh, in a second, the same picture, it's easy to spot. But in this case, like we, it seems like we use a pool of pictures and promote a several topic, but not at the same time. So we use a pool to choosing a random topic which we're supposed to promote and putting it into the agenda. So for Twitter, it's like a cat and mouse game, uh, like, like uh, any time Twitter enhance uh, detection rate for the bots, like bots evolve. And on my personal experience, when we work it on the slides, for example, like late night, I found like very interesting account and I just uh, saved the URL, supposed to make a screenshot next day. And at the time when I wake up, account has been already blocked for the Twitter and it, it happened tens of times. So Twitter doing really, really good job and we trying to do it the best. So uh, this is like uh, another person we spotted uh, when we record one hour of all Twitter posts in, in Germany. So the guy claims he is like a media expert and he promotes different topics. But the way how it looks like it was like a post in Germany, somehow not normal post. And this is cluster related to this guy. And this is the guy and like some strange account among them which are not following any other account and we're retweeting like uh, everything that uh, he retweets. So uh, in, our, in, our, in our case, like uh, sometimes you can spot uh, really interesting things. So here you can see like uh, the same amount of following, like and the numbers, it's quite big. But the most funny thing, sometimes you can spot a rented bot. So what does it mean? So like one party rent a boat for a week and another did it next week. So for example, like uh, during the election, like somebody like from one party uh, rented a boat and they promote one party and the next week the same boat like uh, blaming this party and promote another one. So what's the funny things uh, you can spot on Twitter? And here you can see like uh, just uh, accounts recently re registered like several days ago. And you can see many patterns that looks quite strange, like here, like here. So, so, so like, uh, and uh, if you look into the accounts, like uh, this is like account uh, uh, here. So, so the handle is quite interesting. Uh, joined it in the November quite recently, already have uh, like 100 tweets. And if you see whom he's following, it's very like famous persons, uh, like uh, news outlets. And if you look into the followers, so you can you can spot interesting hashtags like follow back and almost the same hashtag in Russian, and you can spot it like among uh, among like uh, the followers almost everywhere. So that's how like some bots looks like. And this is like uh, yet another interesting bot that registered uh, the first of December. It has already like 400 tweets and very interesting name. Yeah, so uh, this is like a political amplification process in Bangladesh. So we spotted like a bunch of accounts. And if you look at, at the date when it registered, like September, September, if you look uh, uh, at the post we did at the same time, so it's exactly the same post. So these kind of bots are not smart, but it's like example of uh, a promotion political event in particular countries with bots. Uh, so what we would like to say, uh, it's like, actually like social networks and bot masters have a conflict of interest because they have almost the same objective. So the more users have social networks, the more popular it is. The more posts has social networks, the more popular it is and more money 
it earns. So sometimes it's kind of trend off the trade off the same as I think in telecom. Like, like marketing is supposed to charge more uh, for uh, prime numbers co calls and like security have to fight with it. So we did several uh, white papers and the last one is uh, called uh, Fake News Machine. It's like 82 uh, pages, white paper. Uh, we published it uh, in summer. So if you need more insight on the underground, you can uh, look into this paper or any hour. And uh, as a conclusion, what I would like to say, like if we look into the theory, like uh, yet another Russian screen, so like uh, this is a truth or agenda for a group of people with power. And what this theory says, like we're supposed to hide a real agenda among a lie or false flags. So anytime you're watching news, uh, you can be somewhere here. It will be like a version of the lie, which you're supposed to believe if you didn't uh, do background check. And usually, whereas a several uh, hour versions of live which prepared for more material like crowds, for people who do background checks. And a good example, I think, like a Polish case uh, when like uh, somebody published it, and we found uh, Cyrillic letters in the binary, so it was Russians. Uh, but like if you read it as a native speaker, the words make makes more sense. Uh, at least uh, it looks like a Google translated and. The words never use it uh, like uh, in the context uh, we're supposed to use. Later on, somebody published it with uh, like uh, Chinese symbol symbols in the same uh, binary. So it looks like uh, several false, false flags or versions of lie uh, just to confuse you. So just do double check if you can and uh, just accept but not beliefs like 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 for your information but not believe anything you watch if you haven't have uh, reliable sources so thank you very much if you have any questions So you mentioned the bandwagon effect uh, earlier, and I'm interested to know whether during the, the study you made, you have some numbers you can share about the threshold where you get to critical mass in numbers, or even as a percentage of the size of the population in a specific country, on average. Uh, so I, I don't have exact numbers, but when I spoke with people who were quite familiar with this topic, they suggested me like uh, Cambridge Analytica articles about like this kind of things. So my opinion, if we spoke about uh, big manipulations, uh, like uh, if you do social engineering like uh, during the targeted attack, you have to trick or not like one or two persons and that's enough. And if you talk about success on this kind of approach, it only could be a statistical approach. So you can trick maybe like uh, 10 persons of the auditory, but sometimes in the voting process or somewhere, like uh, the difference between like uh, several parties, like one or two percent. And in this case, there could be happen something, but it's not about like if you do everything, like order all the services, like you can sway totally kind of opinion. Got you, thank you. Hi, uh, thanks for thanks for your speech. Um, I had a question. So I under, understand the automated bots, but in terms of like humans and hiring humans at scale to write comments or like posts or be Twitter uh, followers, how does that work? I mean, is it just like a huge room like this of people sitting behind terminals, or is it more outsourced and farmed freelancers? I just how could we get a thousand people at scale to to do that kind of action? I'm just kind of curious. So uh, there are uh, at least two options for this. It's, I'm, I'm not supposed it's like a room. It's crowdfunding uh, projects. So like uh, people, peop some students, so like young people earning money on comments. And uh, another thing like where is like a kind of stock market. Uh, and you can find that, uh, uh, several of reference in our white papers. So when people like comment like uh, on one side and where receive uh, the similar positive comments on their own side, What's the one side of the coin? And another thing related, like for example, services like guaranteed videos view, video views on YouTube. 
So you can order a service like uh, which force people watch your video at least two minutes, and leave rate will be like about like 10 percent. So like about 90 percent of the visitors will watch your video at least two minutes. So and how it works? Uh, sometimes like um, you, for example, if you have like a mobile phone and applications like from Android market, some applications have a, have a, an advertisement. And we show you, for example, advertisement for 30 seconds, uh, like um, if you want more coins for the game or something. And I think this could be another background like for this kind of approaches. Interesting. And then uh, secondly, do you personally feel um, under scrutiny for your research? I mean, obviously, this has political ramifications and I don't know if anything gets back to you ever. I mean, do you see the FBI or anything like that? So you're asking about me or about like... For you personally, yeah. <laughs> or just no comment there. I'm still alive and I'm happy. But very good, very good. Uh, so uh, like on, on the white paper, we uh, had like uh, four like uh, hypothetical cases, but based on the real uh, world like scenarios we saw, it's like uh, how to make street protests, how to blackmail journalists. And after we published the white paper, the journalist who was like a prototype for our uh, our case uh, was uh, attacked again. So, so, so it's uh, like real life cases for some persons. Thanks for your research. I think it's really important. Thanks. Um, thank you for the talk. I have a question regarding the manipulation services. Have you an idea of the um, let's say quality of service? Uh, if you pay for having views or having followers, what can we really expect to have it? Have you an idea? Do you evaluate that? It's, yes, it's a, yeah. The services work it because uh, if you look into the underground forums, uh, we use uh, like uh, uh, like escrow services, and you can't advertise uh, your service if you not provide evidence to escrow. So and after after the services, you can watch a positive comments and uh, if it doesn't work, uh, where is a special list uh, like uh, what's called like so where are special sections on the underground forum what's called arbitrage, and where list of people who called like reapers, so who didn't accomplish the task we advertise, and uh, and if the person on the reapers list, there is no way to sell the services. And this list is sure. You believe it? Yes, and I saw many accounts like with like almost million followers. And if you do like background check, uh, you see like the bots. Thank you. Hi, th thanks for the presentation. So I was wondering for gathering the data and chasing down the boats and doing your research, did, did you use any particular tools, open source, or um, did you develop your own scripts or? Yes, we do have uh, like customized scripts and for visualization we use Gephi. Okay. Uh, and the scripts that you use to gather this data, are they public on GIT Hub or something? Uh, it's, it's not public yet, uh, but if you are talking about kind of Twitter feeds, mm. I think Twitter gives like uh, one person of the post tweet like almost for everyone, like for researchers. So it's really hard to get like a full feed, but like uh, a part of the feed uh, you can get like and do research. And Twitter like really, really fighting uh, with uh, these kinds of activities. And the way actually our, our company uh, got uh, the full Twitter feed, uh, the company won competition on detecting like bots uh, several years ago. And it, this was a prize. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, so if you uh, are interested in the theory, uh, we not put a much of theory, uh, many many theories uh, uh, like uh, pages uh, inside this talk and uh, inside the white paper. But in the white paper, there is uh, like appendix, 
and you can read the links and you can use the docs from the presentation uh, to found uh, like uh, interesting theories. So another interesting theory, it's called Overton window. Uh, we didn't show it here. So it's a theory how to force people accept unacceptable. So, so there is a theory which claims like if you uh, go into several stages, like it's unacceptable, it's radical, it's somehow acceptable and so on, it takes time but people can accept almost everything. 